Welcome to Hello Movies, a podcast by movie lovers for movie lovers. I'm your host, Natasha Gargiulo. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, and this week we're looking at two films that could be perfect for an upcoming date night. The Photograph starring Issa Rae and Lakeith Stanfield, and Downhill starring Will Ferrell and Julia Louis-Dreyfus. But first, I want to introduce my special guests for this episode, Kevin McCarthy and Lauren Veneziani. Kevin and Lauren are both film critics based in Washington, D.C. Kevin co-hosts Real Blend Film Podcast and can be seen on Fox 5 in Washington. And Lauren reviews films on her website, DC Film Girl. They also happen to be husband and wife. And I thought, who better to bring in and discuss this year's Valentine's Day slate? Lauren and Kevin, welcome to the podcast. I'm so happy you guys had the time to uh, make it on Hello Movies. How are you? I'm good. We're so excited to be on because Valentine's Day is one of my favorite times of year. And I legit love talking about romance movies so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for having us on, Natasha. It's great to talk to you. And uh, and, and this is awesome. So thank you. <laughs> Your relationship with Lauren, Kevin, seems so ingrained in a shared love of movies. So what role has film played in your relationship? Yeah, I mean, movies are the whole reason we're together. So we first started talking online. We 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 fell in love, like kind of a, a mutual love for this movie called Drive, which uh, Nicholas Winding Refn, Ryan Gosling, uh, Brian Cranston, just a, the similarities of what we both appreciated about the movie or, you know, those things are hard to find. You don't really meet people who are sometimes share the same exact uh loves of certain types of movies like right. um and it's also an underrated like actual romance as well yeah i mean <laughs> that, that in, in the end of the day i mean i i want my romance films to have a have a gritty reality to them um not not that it, you know i want real life to <laughs> to mimic something like drive but like you know you look at a film like true romance which is extremely violent quentin tarantino tony scott directed um but at the end of the day that and even a film like django another quentin tarantino film uh, at the end of the day, they're love stories. And uh, I think that the, those films, while they tackle extremely violent subject matters and things like that, I just love the adventure of a love story through an R-rated storytelling. Yeah. yeah. I would love to know um, from the both of you about the excitement of still going to a movie theater to watch a film. Like, why do you think going to see a movie in a theater is such an ideal date night? Literally to this day, I'm 32 years old, and my favorite date of all time is dinner in a movie, like yeah. in a movie theater. Mm -hmm. And um, that's just so, like, I usually like to see the movie and then have dinner afterward to talk about it. And that's always what I recommend to, you know, girlfriends who are going out on a date with somebody, um, maybe not like the the first time, but like the second or third date. Like, I mean, just going to a movie and dinner is just like such a fun thing to do. Okay, so we're talking about Valentine's Day now and Valentine's Day releases. I'm curious, when it comes to Valentine's Day films, do you have any go-to picks? I mean, if you want to go typical, if you want to go like cliche romance type of like what would be like a like a normal, normal, I don't even know what normal <laughs> means, but I mean, I love actually films like Notting Hill. Right. Um, Notting Hill's. You know, we love. Notting uh, Hill is like one of our favorite movies yeah. together. Um, because I don't Notting know Hill. if you remember, like, but Kevin and I obviously do, you know, Kevin does more so than me, but we do a lot of press junkets throughout the year. And that's the mm -hmm. first movie where you see Hugh Grant's character pretend to be a reporter to get into the press junket yeah. in London to meet Julia Roberts. That's one of my favorite. And that's like, that was the first time a press junket setting was introduced in a movie as far as I can remember the first one I saw um, so Notting Hill for us as a couple that one's super important um, and that's a movie that you could watch anytime during the year but we we always usually kind of watch it around Valentine's Day and another movie for me that's one of my favorite romances of all time just your classic romance is When Harry Met Sally yeah. with oh, Meg Ryan course. and Billy Crystal yeah, yeah that's <laughs> I mean that is, I just love that story you've got mail. yeah you've got mail is my yeah, is, is You've Got Mail and When Harry Met Sally. Meg Ryan is still like my yeah. rom-com queen and anything that she's in that's romantic comedy related is going to be yeah. like a classic film that, that and, I grew up with. And in New York, like we've gone, we've like, we've, we've gone to the restaurant from You've, you've got, got Mail, Ma yeah. uh, Cafe Lalo. We've mm -hmm. gone to the Harry Met Sally, um, Katz's Deli. You yeah. know, we purpose, purposely <laughs> waited to sit at the table where they filmed the classic her, her Meg Ryan scene. sequence. But, um, yeah, I mean, those those movies are very important to us. I think True Romance uh, and true romance, uh, would ultimately yeah. be my yeah. number one go-to personally. So I'm going to bring you back a bit later because I want to get your takes on two films that are going to be released this Valentine's Day. The first of those films is The Photograph. 
just don't understand why she couldn't tell me about her life while she was alive. Maybe she thought it would help you look at her in another way. Hey, I'm Michael Block from the Republic. I'm doing a story about your mom. How's your article coming? To be honest, I was a little distracted. So I kept running back in my mind how you might respond to me asking you for a drink. So that was you asking me? In, in my mind, it wasn't that forward. You know what I mean? It was more smoother than, than that. <laughs> The photograph is a new romantic drama written and directed by Stella Meggie. When a famed photographer dies, her daughter May is left full of questions. But when May discovers a photograph tucked away in a safe deposit box, it leads her on a journey to discover more about her mother's early life and ignites an unexpected romance with a young journalist named Michael. Stella Meggie is one of Canada's brightest filmmaking talents. Her previous work includes the 2016 indie darling Jean of the Joneses and 2017's YA hit Everything Everything. Here she is describing where the inspiration for the photograph came from. There's so many great photos I have of my mom and my grandmother and my my godmother when they were young. And, you know, it's one of the few times you can look through these photos and see them as they were, you know, like before my mom had me as like a young woman. And, you know, there's something about looking at a photo of my mom at that age from that time where you realize there's this whole person you you don't know. I don't know that woman. I don't know that like, you know, 25-year-old woman who was pregnant with me, you know. And, and I think that's what, you know, the photograph is about, like May getting this photo and looking at it and 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 figuring out who the woman in that fo- photograph is. The photograph stars Issa Rae, who you might recognize from The Hate You Give and her HBO series Insecure, and Lakeith Stanfield, who's on the hit FX series Atlanta and most recently had roles in Uncut Gems and Knives Out. Here's Maggie describing why she wanted to work with Issa Rae. Issa and I had worked together on her show, and I'd gotten to know her, and and she has so much room to stretch, and you can see that on a show. And, you know, I just loved working with her so much that I thought, you know, wow, like, this would be such an unexpected role for her, um, but something that I could totally see her bringing to life and, and making you love a kind of character that is a little cold and a little, you know, and is grieving uh, and bring a warmth to that. And here she is on what Lakeith Stanfield brought to the role. He's that actor that's so amazing because you never know what to expect or how he's going to play something. And, you know, this role could have come off as like the suave player, you know, and in that kind of stereotypical romantic film. And he brings such a complexity to the character um, and an honesty of, of men, you know, like, you know, that are that want to be in love, but aren't ready for it, you know? And uh, I, I just think, He just brought so many layers to the character. The photograph opens in Cineplex Theatres on February 14th. Before we get to our second release, I want to share a story that really warmed my heart heading into Valentine's Day. This is filmmaker Lee Lockler, who used his love of film to put together one of the all-time great proposals for his girlfriend, Dr. Stuthi David. Here's how it all went down. I had an idea a few years back uh, for a friend of mine who mentioned that he was going to propose. He was interested in proposing to his then-girlfriend and was trying to figure out a creative way to do it. And I must have watched Forrest Gump in advance of it, because the idea was, what if you guys are at home and you're watching her favorite movie, and then all of a sudden in a key scene, you just show up like composited into the background holding a ring. And it's that sort of moment of, uh, how did he do this magic with, um, you know, just the intimacy and the uh, personal significance of doing it in her favorite film. And his answer was something like, you know, that doesn't seem like something I would ever do, but that sounds like a you thing more than me. It's like, oh, okay. So I sort of filed it away for later and, uh, you know, cut to a few years down the road. Um, Stithy and I had been dating for a couple of years at that point, and, uh, and uh, I started giving some thought to how I might propose. And I dusted off that idea because I thought it still had, you know, maybe some legs, but the problem was her favorite film is Sleeping Beauty, and it's animated, it's not live action, so it wouldn't make any sense if I were to composite myself. And then one day, just on a whim, I got a copy of Sleeping Beauty, I started scrubbing through it, just in case there was like some scene that might work in a way I wasn't imagining. And I got to the end, and there's that, you know, famous scene at the climax where Prince Philip comes and he, you know, kisses Aurora and he wakes her up. And uh, what I noticed about the scene was that 
you know, because she's asleep and because he's kneeling down, it's largely static. There's not a lot of movement. And it started to occur to me that maybe I didn't need to be a great animator to pull this off. Maybe I just needed to partner with someone who could draw in the Disney style. And then using my cursory knowledge of Adobe After Effects, I could add just a, just enough movement so that it would feel like it was real and animated. And so that's, uh, that's what I did. Lee set up a screening of Sleeping Beauty at a local theater in Massachusetts and packed it with friends and family members. Here stood Thee on the moment she knew something was going on. So the first thing was I noticed like Aurora was no longer looking like Aurora. And I was like, oh my God, something's wrong with the film. And then like Lee popped up on the screen and I remember being like so confused. Like I was like, why does that guy look like my fiance? And it honestly wasn't until when the ring popped up to Sleeping Beauty that I was like, oh my God, is this a proposal? And then I blacked out. I don't know what happened. So does Lee see this as a side hustle moving forward? I have already received some DMs of, you know, friends of mine who are like, oh man, I'm about to propose. Like, can we, you know, grab a beer? But all of the support I've received in person has just been super complimentary. And everyone I've talked to in person has just, you know, it's, it seems like it's meant a lot to a lot of different people. It sort of gives you like a, a bit of respite, right? You can kind of escape from, you know, maybe a lousy news cycle there for three minutes and 23 seconds and just, you know, suspend your disbelief, suspend the rest of your life and just believe in love and in magic and in this sort of fairy tale ending that only celluloid can offer. Our second Valentine's Day release is pushing the boundaries of the rom-com genre. It looked like it was going to kill us. For a and moment. the kids were screaming because it felt like we were going to die. Pete? Wow. And I look over at Pete, and he had grabbed his phone. Pete left us. Please. Downhill is an English-language adaptation of the much-celebrated 2014 Swedish film Force Majeure. After barely escaping an avalanche during a ski trip in the Alps, a seemingly perfect family is forced to reevaluate life and how they truly feel about each other. The film stars two of the funniest people to ever grace the silver screen, Julia Louis-Dreyfus and Will Ferrell, and is co-directed by Nat Faxon and Jim Rash, the celebrated writing team who won a Best Adapted Screenplay Oscar for The Descendants in 2012. Here's Jim Rash discussing the duo's approach to adapting Force Majeure. We were already fans of Force Majeure, as was everyone involved. Uh, but, you know, obviously this, the tone was something we have played with. It was very different from Force Majeure. And also with Julia's including, uh, uh, being part of this, we wanted to sort of dig into the Billy character, her character, a little bit more than maybe Force Majeure sort of deals with masculinity and cowardice. And we kept that on the Pete side of things, but really wanted to think about an American couple in this situation and also being out of fish out of water. So it was important for us to take the spirit of force majeure and and but come from a different place which obviously happens has to happen because the characters are different and here are the two directors on how audiences will view this unconventional take on a valentine's film hopefully they see it as an identifiable depiction of what marriage is like because marriage is a lot of work it's constantly a roller coaster where you know you have terrific moments and you have trickier moments that require you to dig out of at times. And despite how long you might have been with someone, you, you don't always confidently know who they are, yes. you know, in any circumstance. Mm -hmm. I think you can, you know, you, you, there's a certain comfort level, uh, but there are times when you may be surprised by- I still don't know who he is. Their actions. Yeah. And here are the two explaining the benefits of getting to work with a co-director. I think one of the benefits of working together is twofold. One, when your brain is fried, that somebody mm -hmm. else is there to help sort of carry the load. That's fair. Uh, so his was fried consistently. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then what's twofold? What's the other the, one? The second one is it's just more fun because you are able to uh, do bits and laugh together. And, um, and I'm told I'm a blast. <laughs> Downhill is in Cineplex Theaters on February 14th. So I'm back with Kevin and Lauren, and I want to wrap things up by talking a little bit about the films we've heard about today. Will you be spending your Valentine's Day night at the Photograph, or will you be going to Downhill? 
No, 100% the photograph. And I want that to be our like Thursday night yeah. before the night before Valentine's Day. That's going to be like our like date night and dinner movie. Um, I am obsessed with movies like this. My favorite type of genre is just pure romance and that's what this movie looks like yeah. to me and it's, it's a female the, director and yeah. which i'm su which like we don't have a, mm -hmm. enough of and i love it seeing like a female director's perspective for this particular story and and also look yeah. he like plays things in an interesting way like for example like there i was watching the trailer there's dialogue in that trailer that that could have easily been like cliche mm -hmm. you know like can i kiss you or, yeah. or things like that but it, 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 it's the way he delivers it it's his earnest it's his honesty i don't know there's something about him as an actor that i just really i loved him in knives out obviously and um but he's you know he he would be the draw for me that uh, reason i would go mm -hmm. yeah no i mean uh, i i like the the premise of downhill in the sense of like we don't see a lot of older you know 40s 50s plus uh relationships and i feel like we don't see a lot of um marriage stories like this so i'm definitely mm -hmm. interested to see it i can't you know i haven't seen the movie like you have so i can't say if it's like you know an ideal valentine's day pick but i like that you know the studio's giving us another type of you know romance and marriage story option yeah. than what we've typically seen in the past you know, and the theme you can kind of see in movies i pick is just movies that i think that are that that deal with the romantic element but also deal with other subjects that like that ground it in a certain reality kevin and lauren it was so much fun having you on the show thanks so much for joining us today no no Thank we appreciate you. it and also we, we want to mention our dog is named oscar after oh, yeah. after the, after <laughs> i'm surprised he wasn't barking yeah. in the background he was here. barking before we came on yeah so. <laughs> Before we go, I wanted to make sure we cap things off with a little Oscar talk. The 92nd Academy Awards take place this Sunday, and to gain a little insight on who will win, who should win, and who might shock the prognosticators, we're joined by our resident film expert, Ingrid Randoja, the deputy editor of Cineplex Magazine. Hey, Natasha. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for uh, being back and talking about the Oscars. So let's start with the front runners. Ingrid, name one person or film that you think is an absolute lock to take home a statue on Sunday night. Well, uh, I think Best Picture is going to go to 1917. I'm, I'm feeling really confident about that. I know people are talking about Parasite, but I really believe that 1917 is a knockout standout film. One of the best films I've seen, I don't know, in 20 years. Uh, it's a big screen event. You have to go see this movie on the big screen. Um, and I think Sam Mendes, this director, is going to win for Best Director. I just I just think it's an incredible piece of filmmaking. Um, and I think it needs to be seen on big screen. And I think it's going to win. Yeah, lots of talk about 1917. I want to know, though, now, I mean, obviously, there's always the good picks, but then there's always the dark horse pick. Who's someone maybe a bit off the radar that you think could walk away as a surprise winner? Well, this is an interesting category. There's lots of uh, dark horses, but I'm going to go with Scarlett Johansson and Jojo Rabbit. She's up mm. for two awards, Best Supporting Actress in Jojo Rabbit and Best Actress in Marriage Story. But the history tells us when actors are up for two awards, um, usually they win in the supporting category. Um, that's happened three times for women. So I'm thinking that Scarlett Johansson could surprise people and win for Jojo Rabbit. Yeah, you know, I'm rooting for Scarlett Johansson. Nominated twice, just give her one. She deserves it, right? Um, finally, we know that the Academy doesn't always get things exactly right. There's always a bit of controversy, right? Who's the one person that won't win an Oscar this year, but you think deserves some recognition? Well, I think this one is uh, quite obvious to anybody that saw Little Woman. Um, director Greta Gerwig should have been uh, nominated for Best Director. Uh, she takes a great novel, and brings it up with a 20, sort of a 21st century eye, a feminist eye, but yet stays true to the story. And watching that film, you get the sense that the, the, the actors and her were in unison telling this story that uh, still resonates today. And it's just, it's just a wonderful experience. I really urge people to get together and go in and see it. And 1917, Little Women and Jojo Rabbit are still playing at your local Cineplex Theatre, so you can still have a chance to watch them on the big screen before Oscar night. It's really true because the Oscars are so much more fun when you've seen the movies and you're rooting for people. So check them out. Thank you for joining us on this special Valentine's Day edition of Cineplex's Hello Movies. The Photograph and Downhill are both in theaters on February 14th. I'm Natasha Gargiulo. See you back here in two weeks. <laughs>